Hey, good morning. All right, Mr. H here, last section of our rational equations unit. We're gonna be doing some solving now. So we're gonna take all that stuff we learned with adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and now we're actually going to put it to use, doing some algebra here. So we're gonna split this into two days, as you can see up here, we're gonna be dealing with day one here. We're gonna identify the excluded values in the least common multiple of the denominators, okay? So reminders on a couple of things. Excluded values, okay? What causes zero in the denominator? Okay, that would be an excluded value because we cannot divide by zero. So I look at this and I go, okay, so whether I set 2m equal to zero or I set m equal to zero, I'm going to get the same thing. So if I do 2m equals 0 or m equals 0, any of my denominators that have a variable, I get the same thing, okay? So I have one excluded value here. I can't plug 0 in for m because it's going to cause a problem, okay? That's done. That's situated. Then finding my least common multiple. Now we've chatted about this before. Okay, when we're looking for my least common multiple. Now, we're not going to do all the solving and stuff up here. Up here, our sole purpose is to figure out what's that multiple going to be. So when I'm looking at this, again, I'm going to look and I look at my coefficients. Okay, well, two and two, that's not real hard to figure out here. Two would be the smallest one that both of them go into. Okay. Variable M, still a singleton. If there's no plus or minus down here, and that makes a difference. So my largest exponent is going to be the same as my smallest here, just be M. And there are no sets of parentheses. Okay. So we remember when we're trying to build these. We're looking at three things, and I'm gonna poke this up over this for just a minute. We've, we've got this in some of the other days of our help. When we're looking at coefficients, again, if they're multiple ones, we can use the graphing calculator. But we want the smallest number that all the coefficients divide into. We want the largest exponent for each base. So if there's only one variable, we just take the biggest exponent we see. And then any set of parentheses that is different, okay, even after we factored if we need to, we're going to include. So here, okay, it'd be 2m, that's it. When I go to the next one, always put my parentheses around my plus minus stuff. If something's not a fraction, it's just over one. And I start running down that checklist again in my head, okay? Strictly looking at denominators. I don't care what's going on up here for right now, okay? Okay, here goes the three checks. Coefficients. There are none individually to look at. These are stuck in parentheses. That's their own thing. Two, single variables. The largest one, I don't have any variables that aren't in parentheses. We don't have any of that. Number three, sets of parentheses that are unique. I see the same one twice. Do not use it twice. Just once is enough. Okay? That's going to be my LCM here. Now, as far as an excluded value goes, it's the same idea. Take that 2x minus 3, set it to not equal 0, and solve it just like you would any equation. So x can't be 3 halves. That's my excluded value. So why are we talking about that? Okay, Why is that going to be important? Because when we start solving in a minute, that LCM is going to help us get rid of all the fractions and make this much more like Algebra 1 friendly. And the excluded value, doing that in advance, is going to help us avoid doing all this work, getting these answers, and then finding out, oh, crap, I put that as one of the answers, and it doesn't work. Who wants to do all the work just to have it go at the end? Okay? So let's rock and roll. Solve the equations. Don't forget about the extraneous solutions. Now, here's, here's the thing from me, okay? Before I start these problems, 
I always like to look at my denominators and see what the extraneous values are going to be. Because if I know what they are, the likelihood that I'm going to forget at the end is great. At the beginning, not so much. So I look at these and I say, okay, so 5x squared can't be 0 and x squared can't be 0. And so if I do a little quick math, gee, what can I square and get 0? Oh, 0. So what does that mean? It just means, hey, right at the beginning I know, if I get 0 as an answer, mm -mm, I, I can't use that. Okay? Just being a little precautious. Okay. Preventative. <laughs> so, okay, solve the equations. First things first. I want my LCM. Okay? So, as we have done before, go through your checklist. Coefficients. Okay? Well, if they're the same, that, that makes that part easy. That's good. Single variables. Variables that do not have a plus or minus involved in them. So I notice here, luckily again for me, they're all the same. They're all x squared. And there are no parentheses here. So 5x squared is what my least common multiple is. Now, could I, and I'm going to show you two ways here. To me, the simplest way is to multiply through my equation by the LCM. But you could just build common denominators here too, like we did when we were adding and subtracting before. So let's take a peek and see what we think is a good idea here. Okay, so if I multiply by my LCM, so 5x squared times all this stuff. Okay, now this first time through, I'm going to write it out piece by piece so you can kind of see what we're doing here. I'm just thinking for a minute. No, I'm not going to do that. I think I'm going to confuse you more. So let's just stick with this for a minute. Excuse my scribble there. Okay. So when we multiply through by the LCM, basically we're distributing this all the way through. Okay, so this first time we do it, I'm going to actually show you the distributing part and to let you see where we can start to cancel and make this a little bit easier to work with. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 5x squared and I'm going to tuck it up in the numerator of each of these fractions. And I'm going to do each one in a different color. Now, will you have to do all of this every single time? No, you absolutely will not. You're like, then why are you doing it now? Because sometimes seeing where something comes from is going to be just as important as getting some of these other things set. Okay, so here's our deal. If I did that and I was looking at each of these separately, which is exactly what I'm going to do, those don't exist right now, is I look and I go, okay, the parentheses are free, but hey, Hardy, you know, these... These cancel. Is that, you know, something I can do? Is that legal? Yes. Okay. So I look at this and I go, okay, so cancel, cancel. So I've got x minus 6. Then I look at my middle term. Okay. The x squareds cancel. That's legal. There's no plus or minus there. So I'd have plus 5x minus 1. And then I get to my last term. And all the stuff on the outside cancels. And you're looking at that, and you're like, dang, all the fractions went away. That's the idea of multiplying by at least common multiple. Now, you'll get to a point where maybe you'll be able to just look at this and go, oh, those cancel, I got this left. Oh, the x squared's cancel, but I got a 5 that I got to distribute there. And skip this step. But I want you to visually be able to see what you're doing, because now all I've got left to do is a little distributing and combining alike terms, and we are going to be ready to rock and roll. All right, I'm going to need a little bit of space here. 
Now, when you go to combine like terms, be careful. The stuff on the left side, I'm not doing opposites. They're on the same side. So 1x and 5x is 6x. Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. Now I start shifting things back and forth and doing opposites to get it there. So if I subtract 1x, so same side, just put them together. Opposite sides do the opposite. Make sure I'm not doing anything screwy. Always got to make sure I'm not doing anything screwy. I do a lot of things that are screwy. 5x equals 12 because I add my 11. And all I always tell people is you don't need to plug your answer back in every time, but here's what you do need to do. Make sure it's not the excluded value, and it's not. And if it's not, we're happy campers. Because most of the time, you've probably done the work right at that point. But if you wanted to check, you could. You're like, Hardy, that's a lot. Well, maybe on this next one, we'll try to skip this middle step, and it won't feel quite so bad. We'll, we'll see. Okay. First things first, though. Again, set. Find your excluded value. Now, this time we got fortunate. It's the same thing again. So, I mean, I already know my excluded value is going to be x equals 0. So if I get 0, that's not going to work. And I also have the same LCM this time. So we may have to take a look at one of the homework examples because I wish I wouldn't have done this. 5x squared. Okay. So I look at this and I go, okay, I know what my LCM is this time. So maybe this time, I'll go ahead, and I'm still going to write this part out. And I'm going to do it in colors. Maybe this time, we'll try and just kind of do it in our heads step by step. We'll see how this goes. Never know unless you try. OK. So if I distribute piece by piece, we'll just start with this first one. I look, these cancel. Now, I don't want to X them out because I still need this for other ones. But I look at that and I go, oh, well, those cancel. So I'm just left with the X minus 3. And I go to the next one. Oh, the 5X squared's cancel. All I'm left with is the 1. Go one more time. Now, this time is a little more interesting. The X squared's cancel, but the 5 doesn't. So the 5 is still here to go with my set of parentheses. Okay, so this time I'm going to have a little more work as far as the algebra part goes. So that 5 has got to distribute through. Come over here because we're going to have a little more work to do. Now this time... Since I have an x squared term, since I have a quadratic, I want all my terms on that side. Instead of trying to get all the x's to the one side and then everything else to the other, if it's quadratic, these need to come over here. Okay? So we'd have 0 on this side because I canceled everything out. Okay, so let's see what I got here. So 1 plus 5x squared minus 11x Minus 37. Oops, should have put that in there. Okay, I'll get this yet. Now, when I get to here, and I'm going to move myself out of the way here. Just a sec. Okay. It's not a diamond. There's a number in front. I could use the quadratic formula. Opposite of B. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That works. Or I can try to factor this. Okay? So maybe we try a little slide and divide here. Are we going to see this a lot? Not really. But we, we've got to be ready when it does. It's going to be a little yuck. Okay. You. All right. Let's see if this is factorable or not. You're like, Hardy, 180? Really? Well... Let's see. This is why I like doing these live. I like to find out stuff with you as we go. All right, let's play. So 180, and we need them to be 11 apart. 
So 180 divided by two, that's a lot more than 11 apart. Three, four, well, we're getting there. Five, six. Now at this point, 30 minus six is 24. So we're, we're getting eight, oh no, nine. Ooh, nine and 20. Now notice I had to play with it a little bit. So nine and 20 minus is the bigger one. And then remember, that's not it. Don't set those equal to zero and say, woo, I'm done. Got to divide by the five, unless you did guess and check. Five doesn't go into nine nicely. Five X plus nine. Uh, five does go into 20 nicely. X minus four. And now to get to the solutions, you just set those each equal to zero. And we end up with four. Uh, 5x equals negative 9 and negative 9 fifths, neither of which are 0. So we're good. Now, again, some of these you're looking like, oh, my gosh, dude, these take forever. Some of them do take longer, okay? I mean, here we had to factor. That was an extra step that we normally don't have to do. It's much closer to what we're doing on this first one most of the time. But don't sit there and go crazy. If you get there and you're like, oh my gosh, this is tick, they're, they're not forever, okay? So here's, here's what I would suggest, okay? This first one, at the very least, on the practice, I would do number one and two, which is just finding out the excluded values, what makes the denominator equal zero, and maybe try out three or four, okay? Don't go crazy. We're gonna have plenty of practice here. So maybe try one of these, or maybe try both of these too, just to kind of get into the swing of things, because we're going to spend more time on this tomorrow, okay? Just looking for some of those little things to make this work a little bit easier. So um, day two will be coming tomorrow. We'll play with this some more. We're going to get there, but the most important thing is to start. If you start and keep working at it, you're making progress, and that's what a big thing in math is about. So fire questions my way, and we'll see you tomorrow.